get some score it started, okay? Hey. Love you. Good morning, friends. Welcome back to the homestead. Hi, chickens. Baka, baka, baka. Baka, baka, baka. So we've got all of our chicken chores done. Rabbits are taken care of. It is another beautiful morning. The sun is out. The bees are out collecting sweet nectar and sap. And we're gonna do the same thing. Just a couple days ago, we went and tapped our black walnut trees and we've been collecting the sap every day or every two days. And so far we've gotten about three and a half gallons. I've left them up there for about two days, but it's been pretty warm. So I don't know how much sap we're actually gonna get. The sap usually runs best uh, when it's cold at night, like below freezing, and then up into the high 40s, low 50s during the day. But like yesterday, it was at 65, and I think the low was only like at 38, almost 40 degrees. So may not have much, uh, much luck there. Man, those roosters are going crazy this morning. They want some attention. We've got our six gallon food safe pail here because I'm feeling ambitious. Not really, it's just the cleanest bucket that I have. Over there in that part of the field is our low effort garden. We're gonna see what we can come up with this year. But we kind of plant that as an experiment to see how little effort goes into uh, growing food as well as provide a nutrient-rich food plot for some animals. That's why we just left it all year. Hi, Daisy. The dogs always enjoy these morning walks. What'd you find there, puppies? What'd you find? All right, so here we are. That beautiful walnut grove. This walnut grove was planted before we owned the property uh, more than 20 years ago. We've just been letting them grow and develop, haven't really touched them at all. Uh, we mow up here in and around them and do a little bit of hunting. A couple of years ago, we decided that we'd start tapping the walnut trees. I learned that you could uh, actually tap walnut trees and retrieve sap. It's very similar to uh, maple sap, but uh, there are a few distinct differences. Uh, one, maple is a little bit more uh, sugar heavy, so there's more sugar content. I think maple is usually around a 40 to one ratio. The black walnut sap is similar, but it's more of about a, a 65 to one or 64 to one. Uh, so for about every gallon of sap that you get, you get, about, you get about an ounce of syrup out of that. Um, and then there's some other unique characteristic. To me, it tastes just a little bit sweeter and not that icky sweet, but just like a natural sweet flavor. And it also has like a fruity, nutty uh, flavor to it as well. The black walnut trees don't flow as heavy as maple, so it takes a little bit longer to actually produce. I've, I've talked with some people that have like 200 trees tapped and um, they're getting a whole lot of sap out of that. But uh, we're just small production. This year we only tapped five uh, of the highest producing trees. So we're gonna see how much sap we've got here over the past two days. So at each tree we've just got our tap in the tree running down through this little hose into a one gallon bucket. And the reason I chose one gallon buckets is because I can kind of guesstimate based on how much is in there. If it's a quarter full, that's about a quart. If it's half full, that's half gallon kind of thing. But this, as I suspected because of how warm it's been, we have about a half an ounce, not much. What does this one hold for us? Seems like it's about the same. Yep, definitely too warm. That's about one ounce. Too warm for sap. Hey, look at there, about three ounces in that one. What 
Well, there's about maybe a cup, cup and a half there. And one last tree, this is our new tree. Oh, not much. About two ounces, maybe two and a half. Not very much production over the past two days, kind of what I expected. Because the sap will generally only run when the temperature is a lot lower than it has been. So, uh, But the nice thing is we're in Tennessee and the temperature changes quite often. So here in about a few days, I think they said a cold front's coming through and we should have some more Arctic we weather, Arctic air. Usually, like last year, it was like right after Christmas. Things were flowing really well. Um, and then uh, I did see some, some indications from other people that here in the area, the beginning of January, it was starting to flow a little bit. Um, but I, I just didn't have the time to, uh, to get tapped at that point. But as far as the trees that we're looking for, when you want to tap a tree, you want to look for a healthy tree um, and not something that's falling apart. Like this one, this one's not so healthy. We might need to take that one out. But you want to look for a healthy tree, um, one that can support the strain of having sap drawn from it. Uh, want it to be about, well, no smaller than 10 to 12 inches. And uh, the, the bigger the tree, the more surface area that it has. And all that so sap r runs on the outside area, just under the bark. So the more area that it has, the more sap that it can draw up out of the ground and feed the, the crown of the tree, which is what you want, because you want the tree to be around for years and years to come. We just want a very small, small bit of that sap. So don't over tap it. I have seen people like when they have larger trees, you know, tap one on one side, one on the other, or uh, a tree that they're gonna be taking out in the, in the future, they'll just go ahead and, and tap all the way around it and pull as much out of it as they can. So lots of things that you can do with black walnuts, collecting sap, making sugar, collecting the walnuts. They make interesting tinctures that uh, you can use to deworm yourself, your animals. And then of course their, uh, their lumber, their wood, is always very valuable as well. Well, we're gonna head back down to the house, get this little bit of sap that we had over the uh, past couple warm days frozen, ready to batch with the next round, and hopefully we'll have some nice cold days coming up here this next week and get some more sap running. So one of the things about sap is you gotta think of it kind of like milk. Um, it does not have a very long shelf life and it will go rancid pretty quick. When it's fresh, it kind of tastes like just like water with a little tiny bit of sweetness. But uh, once it's gone rancid, it'll have like a twingy, tangy flavor. Yeah, you'll, you'll know, it'll, you'll be like, oh, this is, this is not good. Um, what you wanna do with a small batch like this, is just throw it in the freezer. It doesn't hurt it at all to freeze it. You can boil it down like halfway and freeze it, you can freeze it as is, it doesn't really matter. And then when you've got the rest of the batch together, you can throw it all in there. It helps if you have a hydrometer, but I, I usually just go by when it looks like syrup, when it tastes like syrup, and it has that consistency that I'm looking for. So um, you can get really scientific with it, but I also found that you can just make it happen. Well, that's about all the video that I've got for you today. We've got our sap. So we're gonna head back down to the house, get these dogs inside, get on with our day because we've got a lot of work to do. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this video informative or at least entertaining in some way. If you did, hit the thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. And if you've not subscribed to our channel, please consider subscribing to see more of what we have going on the help on the homestead. And if you want a, like a full video series on how we did this whole process, uh, I put out a, uh, like a four part series of us tapping the trees, collecting the sap, recording the progress, doing the boil, and then doing the, the finished boil. Uh, you can watch that. I'll see if I can leave a link to that down in the description below. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.